Hello, historical geology students. This is your first lecture for spring 2021, Roan State Community College Historical Geology, Geology 1050. I'm going to call this particular video Spring 1, and the next one's going to be called Spring 2, and they're going to keep on going to, I don't know, maybe Spring 50 or something by the end of the semester. Um, obviously because of the pandemic I can't meet you and I really feel bad about that because I like to meet my students and get to know them but we're going to do the best we can uh, so that you get a great class experience and I'm, I'm going to show you that y you can get a lot out of this class a lot of people, uh, they just take science classes and they think, oh, this is going to be a boring class and I'm just doing it to get my degree. But I, I'm hoping by the end of the class that you will have absorbed a lot of the information and maybe find it interesting. Because I tell you the honest to God truth, um, I find this class to be one of the most interesting classes you can take in college. Um, it was for me when I went to Penn State back in the day. So... Um, what I wanted to do today was cover the syllabus, and I'm, I'm going to send everybody a copy of this syllabus, but watch this video so you know exactly what you need to do in this class, and you're going to learn about what this class is going to be about, how we're going to keep in contact, what books you need to buy, how we're going to do the grading, and what um, we're going to cover in this class. All of that is going to be in the syllabus, so... Without further ado, let's do that. Um, the name of the class is GEOL1050, and it's called Historical Geology. Some of you all were my students last semester in Physical Geology. And if you're here, uh, uh, so welcome back if you're a former Physical Geology student. Um, make a long story short, in all of the United States and Canada, all 50 states and all 11 Canadian provinces, there are two introductory geology classes that you can take, physical geology and historical geology. Um, let's start off by talking about what is geology. Well, it's Latin. The, um, geo in Latin means earth. Ology uh, means study of. So geology is the study of the earth, of our beautiful planet, the third planet from the sun. Um, now physical geology and historical geology are different things. Physical geology has to do with um, studying why the earth is the way it is, why, how did the Appalachian Mountains form and when did they form, um, how did the Grand Canyon form? Um, how, do, um, how did the Earth's interior form, the crust of the mantle and the inner core and the outer core? Why do we have earthquakes and volcanoes? How do we look at um, rocks and figure out what happened in the past, uh, both beneath the Earth and at the surface of the Earth? We also, in physical geology, we talk a lot about oil and natural gas and mining you know, for precious metals and gemstones and how um, a knowledge of geology when used, can be used to make money in real estate transactions, buying a house. Um, on, historical geology is different. So what is historical geology? Well, I'm sure you've all taken history classes before, right? Do you like history? I love history. Every night I read a history book. And it's fascinating me, to me to read about the past. World War II and World War I and the Great Depression and the Civil War and the Revolutionary War and Kaiser Wilhelm and the Ottoman Empire and the Japanese Empire and the and the African empires and the Indian empires and going all the way back to the time of Christ and 
the Roman Empire. Well, that's very interesting stuff, but what historical geology has to do with is the history of our planet, planet Earth. And I'm going to show you that all of the scientific evidence points to the Earth being 4.6 billion years old. That's a number to remember. And the universe being 13.7 billion years old. How in God's name do geologists know that? Well, I'm going to show you the evidence for that. Um... And in order to do that, we have to look at Earth's place in the universe. We're the third planet from the sun. There are eight planets revolving around our sun. Our sun is one star in the Milky Way galaxy. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? There are 200 million stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Let me show you what the Milky Way galaxy looks like. This is our galaxy. And um, here you can see where that red arrow is. That's where our, our sun is. Our sun is one out of 200 billion stars in this big spiral galaxy that we live in called the Milky Way. At the center of our galaxy is a dark hole, uh, a, a black hole, I'm sorry. It's a black hole, and we're going to discuss what that means later on. In the center of all galaxies, we find black holes. But going back to this, um, to see how small planet Earth is in the grand scheme of things, think about it like this. Our sun is one out of 200 billion stars in the galaxy, and there are two trillion two trillion known galaxies in our universe. We're less than a grain of a sand on a beach, aren't we? We're very small in the grand scheme of things. Um, how did this universe come into being? And how, and how did that lead to the formation of our galaxy and our solar system and our planet? And what caused the dinosaurs to become extinct? All of those things are talked about in historical geology. So, history has to do with everything that happened uh, over the last 10,700 years. But the Earth is 4.6 billion years old. So, imagine um, that I had a book right here in it, and this book has a thousand pages in it. If you study history, you're studying the last paragraph on page 1000 of Earth history. And the great thing about studying historical geology is we get to read the other 999 and a half pages. That's pretty interesting stuff, if you ask me. And it's all recorded in the rocks. So once we learn how to study, especially sedimentary rocks, we can study the history of our planet. Okay, so we're going to be talking about the history of our universe and the history of our planet from 13.7 billion years ago to 10,700 years ago. Uh, my name is Arthur Lee, and I have a PhD from the University of Southern California. Uh, well, I don't know why I opened up Microsoft Word here, but um, so where in God's name did I do? Okay, so I must have closed the syllabus. So, um, the University of Southern California. We have a great football team, the Trojans. We're the only football team named after condoms. <laughs> I'm sorry. You get bad humor in this class for free, too. So, anyway... Usually, my office would be in Golf 224, but obviously, because of the pandemic, I can't be there. So, how are we going to keep in touch? Well, best way to keep in touch is send shoot me an email to one of these two email addresses, leea at runstate.edu or aclee1234 at yahoo.com. I check my email account three times 
a day or four times a day. So, and I'll email you back. Um, since you can't meet me physically at my office, how how can we meet? Well, uh, we could I could set up a Zoom appointment so I can talk to you. Um, just send me an email, and um, we'll we'll talk. Uh, if you don't, you're having a problem on your lab, and you need help on it. I can set up a Zoom appointment with your whole lab group or just you. If there's something you don't understand, I can, we could talk about it. Uh, if, if you want to um, have any questions about scheduling or anything else, we can set up a Zoom appointment. Just let me know and I'll do that for you. We'll set it up between 7 and 9 p.m. from Monday through Saturday. So how do you get your lectures? Well, you're getting your first lecture right by watching this video. And you're going to get um, videos every week for your lecture, and they'll be uh, they'll be online by mon every Monday. And here's my YouTube channel right here. And so click on this link when you get the syllabus, and you can get to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you know when new videos are uploaded. Always watch the videos every week. Don't fall behind. And if you don't understand something, rewind it and hear it again or listen to the videos twice if you need to. But all of your lecture material is on my YouTube channel. Um, other thing I want to make sure you do is please, please, I beg of you, keep your email inbox clear. Because uh, sometimes I'm going to send everything to you by email. Um, your labs, your lectures, your quizzes, your study sheets, everything. And if your inbox is full, then uh, you're not going to get the class emails and you're going to miss stuff. So make sure you clear out junk email, keep your email inbox clear so you continue to get my emails. The other way we can keep in touch is by using a program called Remind. I'm sure you might have used this before in high school or in college. I'm going to send you a link to your uh, to the email or cell phone number that you have on file at run state and I'll send you all of the, the class information through remind as well so you're gonna get it both by class email and through remind and also you can message me on remind uh, and uh, if you have any questions or anything I can help you with um, so now we know that we're going to get our lecture videos to watch and they'll be available every Monday. Uh, the other part of the class is the, the lab and um, usually obviously we meet in lab but we can't do that because of the pandemic so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you with two or three other students and you're going to form a lab group. And the first thing you want to do, once I'm going to send you the email and cell phone numbers of your lab partners, and I want you to um, work together, get to know each other, communicate so you can finish the labs. You're going to get your labs every Monday, and they're going to be due at when, by Wednesday at 7 p.m. They must be handed in by Wednesday at 7 p.m. So you get them on Monday. You got to, that gives you a couple days to do it, and you'll send it back either in Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel files and um, um, so you need to keep in contact with your lab partners. I, I understand sometimes people don't get along uh, but try and work together no matter who your lab partners are uh, try and work together for them so this for the sake of your group so that you can successfully complete the lab assignments. Every well, three or four weeks, we're going to have a quiz. And so you're going to work with your lab partners, and then you will submit a quiz. Once I get your lab assignments or your lab quizzes, I'll grade them and send them back to you so you know what you got wrong and what your grade is. Two or three of the lab quizzes, um, and um, are going to require that you pick up physical samples of fossils. And fossils are evidence of past life. 
preserved in the rocks or sedimentary rocks. And so you're going to have to send one person to my house at 115 Dixie Lane, Oak Ridge, Tennessee to pick up um, your samples for your group. You'll complete your lab quiz or your lab and then you return the boxes to my house as soon as within three days of completing your lab quiz or your lab assignment. So um, make sure you do that and let's see so let's go on course objectives what are you gonna what are what's or what's the goals of this class well you the goal of this class is to unravel the history of planet earth and in order to do that we also have to look at the history of the universe so we're going to look at the history of our, our universe which began 13.7 billion years ago through something called the big bang 99.9% .9 of the scientists think that a big bang for, big bang 13.7 billion years ago created our universe and then 4.6 billion years ago our earth formed and then we're going to look at see what happened throughout earth history by looking at the sedimentary rock record um we're going to but it's a lot different um for than physical geology. We're going to focus mostly on sedimentary rocks, not on igneous and metamorphic as much. And we're also, the other difference is with historical geology, we are, we're going to look at the history of geology, which means um, where the continents were in the past, uh, when did the various mountain ranges form, um, when did the dinosaurs appear on planet Earth, when did they disappear, um, when did vertebrates appear, uh, and we're going to look at that, but we're also going to look at the biology of our planet, um, all the different life forms that existed during different t parts of Earth history. And we can do that by looking at fossils. So it's going to be interesting. It's like history, but it's also science too, because it, the, the techniques of science are used to determine the history of our planet and the universe. Learning outcomes. So we're going to learn about the Big Bang, which almost all scientists believe occurred 13.7 billion years ago and formed our universe. We're going to look at biological evolution. So we have to talk about Charles Darwin. Um, biological evolution, I'll tell you several things about it. It does not mean there's not a cre it does not mean that there's not a creator. I happen to be a Christian and um, most Christians believe that God could have created evolution so his creations could survive. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk, though, we're going to talk about the fossil record and how species change. It has it's nothing to do with whether there's a creator or not. It, it, it simply says only the, the fittest individuals within, within a species will survive and they will pass their traits on to the next generation. And that can cause new species to form. That's what biological evolution means. It's and it, I, I'm, it's the foundation of modern day biology. It's why we can develop um, insecticides and new antibiotics, and how we fight the coronavirus. All of this is through our knowledge of evolution. So we're also going to talk about the solar nebular theory. How our planet formed and how the moon formed, the creation of our universe, how mountains form, and why species become extinct, like the, for example, the dinosaurs. So we got lots of interesting material to cover. And um, this is stuff you can use for the rest of your life. When you go to national parks, I, I know you're young now, but later on you're going to have kids, and they'll say, um, you could show them rocks. Hey, Dad, what's this? Oh, well, that's fossils that died a long time ago, and these these creatures are no longer here. And then these rocks on top are younger, and so these are creatures that replace them, etc. And it's it, it's it's quite interesting. Um, I had a lady in one of my classes, historical geology. She loved the class so much that uh, eight years later she emailed me and she said. 
every time my husband and I go out in our RV, um, I always have to stop and look at the sedimentary rocks and study the earth history. It kind of annoys my husband, but I do it anyway. And I thought that was funny. Anyway, it, it's a very interesting class. We're going to learn about how to use the scientific method to study our past. What class, what books do you need for this class? Well, you're going to need this book here, Historical Geology, Evolution of Earth and Life Through Time, 8th edition by Wickender, Reed, and Monroe. And you're also going to need this lab manual, Historical Geology Interpretations and Applications by Port and Carlson. Okay. There are three ways to get this book. You get it through the bookstore. Might be the easiest way. You get it through Amazon.com. If, if you want a used edition, you get it through Amazon or eBay. Uh, usually eBay is a little bit cheaper. That's why I like to go to eBay. But Now you can get it in either of those two as well. Just make sure you get the right edition. You're going to need some number two pencils because you're going to have to do some drawing in this class. And you're going to need some colored pencils. You can get that at the dollar store or at um, Walmart or at the gross Kroger's or wherever you go. How are the grades done? Well, okay, the, ladies and gentlemen, this this grades are done. I've developed a grading system that is fair, and everybody gets treated the same. I don't care what you look like, how old you are, your gender, your religion, your uh, if my own son or daughter were in my class or my girlfriend was in this class, they, they would get treated the same. Everybody gets treated exactly the same. 75% um, of your grade is your tests, your test scores. 75% of your grade is your tests. 25% of your grade is the lab. Okay, 75% is the tests and 25% is the lab. You're going to have four tests this semester. So we're going to have a test about once every four weeks. The tests are 50 questions multiple choice. And they will be done through a momentum. I'll send you instructions on how to do that. The tests will be one hour long. And... Um, of those four tests that you get during the semester, you get to drop the lowest test score. So let's say, let's call the four tests, uh, for example, test one, test two, test three, test four. If test three is your lowest score, you drop test three, and your top three tests are worth 75% of your grade. I curve the tests, meaning that if you do average on the test, you'll get a B. If you do above average, you'll get an A. If you do below average, you'll get a C. And if you do much below average, you get a D. If you study and, and, and watch the videos and really pay attention and read the book, too, read the book, too, um, you should do well. Your lab is worth 25% of the, your total grade. And half of that lab, 12.5%, is... Um, uh, okay, so half of your lab is the lab assignments you send in every week. And the other half is your lab quizzes. Extra credit. What can you do for extra credit in this class? I know people are going to forget this 15 weeks from now, but let me just tell you what it is. You can write a one to two page paper. On, uh, in Microsoft Word and describing what you found most interesting to you, to you in this class. Or how you could benefit, how taking this class could benefit your career your future career or life. In your own words, nothing from the internet, nothing from your Uncle Joe, nothing from a book, but your own, I want to know what's in your head. And 
if you hand that in before the final exam, you can add up to five points to your lowest non-dropped test score. Okay, so if you're on the boundary between a B and a C or an A and a B, then that extra credit paper could help you put you over the edge. So you might want to consider that. Plagiarism and academic integrity. Well, I have a lot of respect for the founding fathers, and including um, especially uh, Benjamin Franklin, uh, of course George Washington, but Benjamin Franklin was a, a great man for many different reasons. And one of the things that sticks out in my mind when we're talking about plagiarism and academic integrity is what he said, honesty is the best policy. And it really is, because if, uh, if you cheat, you're not going to learn anything. You know, what's the point of going to college? You're, the, you're here to learn something. Plus, it's almost impossible to cheat in my class. Why? Well, uh, you have to, when you take the test, you have to click on a link on Zoom so I can watch you taking the test. Plus, everybody's going to get a different test. I have, so, I have lots of different tests. So not everybody's going to get a different test of equal difficulty. Um It'd be a thousand times harder to cheat on this test than it would be just to do the honest thing and just study. So that's all I have to say about that. And also, if I do catch anyone cheating, then I have to contact the dean, and then you and you could get kicked out of school. And I I don't like to do that to people. I, I the last thing I want to do is ruin someone's life. So just uh, do it the honest way. That'd be great. Students with disabilities, if you've got a disability and you need me to accommodate your disability, uh, I will do that, but you have to do it the legal way, which is to go through Roan State Community College's disability office. Go to um, my friend Jeff Snell, for example, and uh, he will fill out the appropriate paperwork. For example, if you need an extra 30 minutes on the test, some, or an extra whatever it is, um, then I need to know that. And it has to go through the disability office, and then I can accommodate you. Preventing sexual discrimination and harassment, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but just, you know, be aware that, you know, when your lab partners, if they're a different gender, you know, do, you know, behave right. You know what's right. Technical support. Uh, people in your, uh, young people like you are probably, uh, they are really good at doing stuff online, uh, better than people in my generation. But if you do have problems, you can call CTAT. Here's the telephone numbers. If you have problems logging out to Momentum or um, if you have problems uh, accessing RaiderNet or whatever it is, contact CTAT. That's what they're there for. Honors program. Um, the honors program at Roan State Community College is a great opportunity. Um, if you're going for a two-year degree or a four-year degree, your ultimate goal is to get your goal in coming to Roan State is one of two. Either you're here for Roan, at Roan State to get a job or you're here at Roan State to finish the first two years of a four-year degree at some place like UT or Tennessee Tech or MTSU or something like that. Um, doing an honors project gets you in the door. Imagine that you... Um, are applying for a job and on your resume on your transcript it says you did an honors project that's going to stand out in uh, when people are hiring or if you if you want to transfer for a four year degree the fact that you did an honors project is going to give you an ed, an edge up let's say you had two people applying um, to go to UT and they both have 3.0 GPAs and but the other one person has the uh, honors project. Th that person's going to get picked, aren't they? So um, last semester I had a great student. Her name was um, Harley Wayland, 
and she did a great honors project, a very interesting honors project, where we looked at sedimentary rocks close to her house, and she determined the depositional environment and where those rocks formed. And a depositional environment means where do those sedimentary rocks form? Did they form in a lake or a river or on a delta or in a desert or by glaciers or in the deep ocean or on the shallow ocean? She looked for clues in those sedimentary rocks and she figured out where those rocks formed. And she wrote it up, took photographs, made a map, and it was a great project. If you want to do a pro <coughs> honors project with me, let me know and I'll we'll pick a, a nice location near your house where you can look at sedimentary rocks and um, we can figure out um, um, something about Earth's past. And um, and even if you don't want if you don't want to work with a geology honors project, do it with some other class. It, it will look very good on your resume or on your transcript. Library services. I'm not going to bore you by reading all of this, but there are all kinds of resources available at the library. There are videos about geology, articles, databases, websites, e-journals um, that could supplement some of the information that's covered in this class. Learning Center. Learning le The Learning Center is a great tool for students who are having difficulty in college. A lot of you are young and you've never been to college before and with the coronavirus going on and whatever all kinds of things can happen in a young person's life that makes it hard to go through school and concentrate and take notes and do the things you need to do to do well in school. The Learning Center helps you mentally prepare for this successful completion of college that is your goal. They will help you um, teach you how to study for tests. They will help you um, on um, learning comprehension, ways in which you can help you study the material uh, to take better notes. And so if you're having any problems at all, go to the Learning Center. My daughter worked at the Learning Center at Ron State, and she helped so many people, and some people went in there, and they were going to drop out, and they ended up being uh, straight-A students later on. So go ahead and use that. Uh, it will help you. Ne uh, um, moving further down this syllabus, we, you can see that this, these are the topics we're going to cover. And week one, week two, week three, week four, etc. So that'll kind of give you an idea of the schedule. It's a 15 week class. And we're going to have a lot of fun, ladies and gentlemen. And um, it's going to be an interesting journey. And um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about job opportunities in geology and the first chapter. So I'll see you next time.